Welcome to Flores Computers Academy. In continuation of our Microsoft Word training for beginners, in this lesson today, we are going to continue with Insert tab, or if you like, call it Insert menu. In the last lesson, I discussed about how to insert a cover page. In this lesson today, we'll be looking at how to insert table. You are not only going to learn about how to insert table, you will also learn how to add rows and columns, how to delete rows and columns, how to merge, uh, how to merge cells. So this lesson is very important and I'd like you to watch to the end. If you have any question or concern, don't hesitate to drop that in the comment section. I will respond to them. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, I will encourage you to go ahead and do so right away. Also, turn on your notification bell so you can be notified when I upload the next video. Now, let's go to the next group on the insert menu, which is table. There are a few things I want you to note before we go ahead about table. One, you can create a table. Okay, two, let me say create or insert table you can insert or create a table then number two you can add row or column to a table then number three you can delete row or column from a table okay so take note of that and then you can format your table number four you can merge merge row or column from a table so that those are the basic things that you can do with your table there are other things but i like you to master this four things, and i'm going to show you how to do these four things that i just enumerated right now then before we discuss about inside the table what why do you need the table what do you do with a table in a word document okay there are times that you want to prepare something like a rule a line in a sheet of paper the same thing if you go for a meeting somewhere you are writing attendance there is a need for you to rule a line we can also prepare a quotation in a table for some businessmen and women that they don't know how to use microsoft excel they can actually use table in a microsoft word in order to prepare that so i'm going to be showing you right now how you can insert a table or create a table so it's important first and foremost to identify how many colors am i going to need how many rows am I going to name? So we are going to use, let me act right now as a student, as a teacher, and I have you as a student in Flores Computers, as a student, and I need to get all your details. What do I need to do? What kind of table am I going to create? Let's go ahead right now. Now, before we do that, if I click on the table, what you can see on the screen right now, this is the row. This is a column, this is a row, and this is a column. Okay, this table that you can see by default, it has 10 columns and 8 row. 1, 2, this is a column, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So you can see this is 10 columns, and then the number of rows, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is 10 column and 8 row. If I need all of this, all I need to do is to put my cursor to the beginning and move the cursor to the last. And then I click on it. Then what happened? I've inserted this table right now. This is 10 column and 8 row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10. So like I said, and then 8 row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7, 8. So this is 8 row. Now, where the rows and the column intersect is called a cell. You are going to learn more about that when we get to Microsoft Excel. So, where the column and the row is, this box, each of the box is actually referred to as, as a cell. Now, I'm going to delete this and show you something else. Now, let's come back to table. Now, you can also insert the table. Okay, if I click insert, then you are going to have this dialog box. What this box is all about is telling me number of columns. Let me start with five columns and two rows. Now, you have the option under here, which is called fixed column width. This is not the best option to use if you are a beginner. But I'm going to show you if eventually you have used a fixed column width, how you can adjust the column in order to fit into the size of the text that you are going to put in there. We also have auto fit to content. We have auto fit to window. 
So I'm going to be working on these two today, fit column width and auto fit to content. We are going to see the difference between the two of them. Let's start with five columns and then two rows. Now you know what rows and columns are. Now we are going to start with five columns. We are going to insert a table right now with five columns and two rows. If we need additional column, we can easily add. And if you need additional row, we can also add. And if you don't need up to five columns as well, we can delete the row or delete the column. So let's go ahead and insert for fixed column width. What do you have? Now, if I insert this, let me say I want to have a serial number. Okay. I want people to write the serial number. Then I'm going to have name of students. Okay. Then we are going to have age, then class, let's say subjects. Now, I want to put grade. That means I need additional column here. What do I need to do? Do I need to delete this to be able to add additional column? No, you don't need to do that. All you need to do is to, your cursor is on the last column here, then right click inside the column, right click on your mouse. When you right click, you have the option to insert. Insert what? You want to insert column. That's what we want to do. When you right click and you go to insert, you have the option to insert column to the left, insert column to the right, insert row above, insert row below or insert says so these are the option that is available to you now insert column to the left the left of what subject the last column heading that we have there is subject so we want to insert column not to the left because the left of subject is after the class right so we want to insert the column to after subject so it's going to be to the right you can see when i did that the column has come then i can do great now this is how to do your table. Then you go ahead and then continue to type. Let's say serial number one, the name of the student. I put James, age, okay. The class is MS Office. Okay, subjects that currently working on what? Great. Okay, let me say uh, we're just using dummy data here. Now, how do I put row number two there are different ways of inserting row right now because i want to type the name of the next student the number two okay in order to do that if my cursor is on the last cell okay the last cell i can use the tab key the tab key on your keyboard in order to insert additional row or the other method that i just showed you before now right click inside this cell and then go ahead and do insert insert what row this time around, we want to insert the row below. Now, I've done that just now. If I want to put the row above the number one, maybe there's a mistake in the document you are typing, you have skipped a row. You don't need to delete what you have typed. All you need to do is to right click on the row, okay, on the cell that you know you want to insert another row above or below. Then right click, and then you go ahead and do insert row above. So you can insert a row above. Or you can insert a row below depending on where your cursor is that's going to determine where the row will go so this time around we have just inserted the row below so number two i can put the name as john then age 28 okay web design training that's the then i do html subject so b3 okay now this how to actually work now remember that we use fixed column this is the problem with fixed column name of students as broken into two line i don't want it to be into two line i want it in a single line what do i do this time around you go straight to your ruler now if you go up to the ruler you can see this is the first uh column the first line of the column this is the end of the first column this is the beginning you can see when i put my cursor on the column it's turned to double cross. When you have this double arrow, then it shows that you can move the column. I can adjust it. You can see, if I put your cursor on it, you are not going to release your cursor. Put the cursor on that column on the ruler, okay, the column line, and then you drag it to wherever you want to expand to. I want to expand this a bit. Now, I still have this name of student, this column. I still want to expand it more. Because it's going to be containing names of people. So this column should be wider than every other column. 
So for example, I have serial number here. I'm just going to be writing number one, two, three, probably the highest number I'm going to write depending on the name of student. If they are up to 100, it means that it's going to be three digits. In that case, I don't need this white space here. So I go ahead and put my cursor on the ruler. Okay, at the top, you can see it show move table colon. When it turns to do that double arrow, then I grab it. You are not going to release your left click on it. Not rightly, you left click on it. Drag it, okay, towards the side you are going. You can see I just drag it. Okay, I'm okay there. What about age? I'm just writing age. This is going to be maximum two digits as well. So I can go ahead and close this as well. You can see the name of student. So I can come over here and reduce this. Uh, I want to give more space for the class. Yeah. Now, that's how to do it. You do that on the ruler. So this is how to go. And then there are times that your table will go beyond your margin, your typing margin. Remember in lesson one, we talk about the left margin, the right margin. Right now, you can see that we are almost exhausting the right margin. This is your right margin here. It begins from here to this point. Okay. This is a point where you are not supposed to type a document. But in most cases, you can see your table expanded beyond the normal margin. What do you do? If I insert another, let's insert another column to the right. Now, you see what happened right now. So if I type here, because a lot of time I've seen people that go through this. So that is why I want to quickly explain it. Okay. Country. Right. You can see. So I've seen a lot of my students at one time or the other struggling with how to adjust their table because of a situation like this, especially if you insert a fixed column and then you have the number of column more than the available uh, working space that you have on your document. You are going to encounter this kind of problem. When you do what you need to do, click on the table. If your cursor is not on the table, you are not going to see the table margin on the ruler. You can see right now, when my cursor is not inside the table, I, the ruler is the normal ruler that I have here. And you cannot solve this problem with the normal ruler. What you need to do is that click inside the table. Then you are going to see the column, okay, on the ruler, the column line on the ruler. Then this, you can adjust this to the left side, this column that we are working on currently. And then you come over to the last one. You are going to see it as you can see on my screen. Drag it, and then you drag it out. Then you are out of that particular issue of the column going beyond the margin that allow you to work. So that's how to adjust your margin when you are using a fixed column. Like I said, this is a lot of work. And then for a beginner, you might go through a lot. I don't know the type of Microsoft Office that you are using. Uh, if what you are using does not is only the fixed column that you have there, then you may have to watch this again and again in order to know how to insert a table, how to insert a row, and then how to actually adjust your margin when it goes beyond, adjust your table when it goes beyond the margin. Let me show you the second way of inserting table. Now, this time around, we are not going to be using fixed column. We are going to be using auto, fixed auto column. So you go to insert, and then I go to table. On the table, I have the option to insert a table again. Remember, I've put my cursor down, so I'm inserting another table. We are still going to do five column and two row. Remember that you now you know how to add additional row. And if you need to add from here, you can do reduce it by clicking on this or just type inside. I want five row or four rows and five column. You can do that. Remove what is there and put your preference there, depending on what you are typing. Remember, you must have looked at the document and know the number of columns and row that it has before you go ahead and do this. And even if you have not done that, you can always come back to insert the rows and column. Now we're gonna use auto fit content into our column. Now see what happened when I do this. You can see how small the table looks like. What this means is that as I'm typing, the column heading is gonna be automatically adjusting the table, which is better than what I did initially. So this time around, if I put serial number, automatically it's going to just fix the column to the serial number, name of student. You can see that the table, the column is expanding by itself, unlike the other time that the column is fixed. Okay, when we did this, the column is fixed, and as a result of that, name of student was dropped into two, two lines. Okay, so now I move from name of student to age. 
it automatically expands that class and then I go to subject. Okay, so I need additional row for grade and country. I will right click on the subject and then I do insert a column to the right. Right, okay, so I can do another one before I type. Insert another column to the right. So to accommodate grade, grade is automatically expanded. The column is automatically country. Okay, so now why did it drop to the next line? We are done with the working area. You can see this is the end of the working uh, page. So this is the right margin. And because the word is not expecting you to type on the right margin, that is the reason why it dropped this name of student into two lines. So what you need to do now is just to grab, okay, you can grab, leave this, and then click outside. Yes, and then you can grab your ruler to expand your working space. Remember I told you in lesson one that you can actually expand your working page by reducing the left and the right margin. You can reduce the top and bottom margin as well. I've done that in detail in lesson one, so you may want to check it out. So this is how to insert both fixed column or auto test in of a table. So when you do that, you have your table and then you can go ahead and type the content into the table. Now let's talk about something here. I'm going to insert another table for an invoice or for a quotation. Now I want to calculate the total. If I want to do the total price here so that I can have the total price here, I may want to merge this cell, the first cell where I have the total, the quantity, and this cell. So I will highlight, remember, how do you highlight? Click on the first or the last cell and drag your cursor over the cells that you want to merge. I click down and then you drag. So I have highlighted this cell this cell and this cell. So this time around, we highlighted three cells. What do I need to do next? Right click. When you right click on that, and then you go to merge cell, you see the option is here. You go ahead and match the cell. So now I have matched this cell. So you can also go ahead and put a design by putting a color. If you look up, you see design is activated. Anytime you click on your table, it means that you can do more. You can change your pen color. You can actually change your border style. You can shade, okay? If I put color, that's under shading, right? So you can do all of those things. That's how to actually, then the total here is gonna be what? 200 plus 500, that's 700. So you can go ahead and bold by highlighting and then use Control B or you go to Home and click Bold. So this is how to merge cell. This is how to insert a table how to add or delete a row. If I want to delete row number two here, all I need to do is to click on any of the cell within the row, okay? Click on it and then I right click. When my cursor is in the actual row, one of the cells in the row that I want to delete, then you go ahead and right click and then I do delete cells. Then it's gonna give me a different option. What do I want to do? I can shift the cells to the left Shift the cell up, you can delete the entire row or delete the entire column. If I choose and delete entire column, in this case, it's going to delete the name of student column. If I delete the entire row, it's going to delete row number two. Then we have deleted row number two, okay? Not the column. I would like you to go ahead and practice with this, okay? Use shift cell up because learning computer has to do with practical class if you are just watching and you are not demonstrating it then you don't know it yet the only proof that you know it is when you go ahead and you practice it and if you encounter any challenge come back and drop that in the comment section i will attend to it so that's how to insert table thank you for watching to the end in the next video, I'll be showing you how to insert images, shapes, and smart art. So if you have not subscribed, go ahead and click the subscription button now and turn on your notification bell so you can be notified when I upload that lesson. Thank you.